Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar offered uh, by the European School Education Platform, uh, the European Commission's uh, platform uh, for school education in Europe. My name is Maria Elena, and uh, I will be your host for today. Uh, some uh, technicalities that we would like to remind you. Uh, as mentioned, uh, this webinar is being recorded. Um, during the, uh, this session, uh, all the learners, all the participants uh, are not allowed to use uh, their Microsoft, uh, their microphone, sorry, or their cameras uh, due to GDPR reasons. And, but feel free to use the chat to post any questions, any thoughts. Some of you are familiar with uh, those procedures. Uh, so help, uh, so you can help the people who are new here. Uh, hey, Maria Elena, uh, sorry yes, to interrupt sorry. you, but there seemed to be an issue with the recording option of the webinar. So just maybe a couple of seconds to fix it because otherwise it will be out of the recording. Because from my uh, options, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to start. I don't know if you have also the same issue. Um, yes. Hmm. Sorry I for can that. <laughs> We can uh, we can try to solve this, but in the meantime, while we are trying to fix those technical issues that we are facing, you can um, I can uh, tell you a bit more about uh, the technicalities. I see questions coming in the chat. No, there is no certificate of attendance for the webinars, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you will learn some very interesting information uh, regarding uh, the climate. Uh, uh, teaching about climate change and uh, the European Climate Pact, and I will uh, tell you more about this uh, during the session. Um, again, I think Teams doesn't want to help us today, but uh, it's it's okay. We can overcome all the difficulties. Uh, please, in the meantime, um, you can uh, tell us where are you coming from, uh, how was your day, uh, if you want. Uh, are you teachers? Are you school leaders? Where are you? Uh, watching us from. Um, but uh, I think we should we should proceed because apparently the recording is on, we think. <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> Sorry, we apologize for this and we apologize for the technical issues. Uh, let's move uh, forward. Let's uh, move uh, basically to uh, the presentation. Um, and uh, let me say a few words about this. Uh, for today's webinars on the topic of climate change, we have uh, invited Ana Leandro. Anna has a strong expertise on the field of sustainability and environmental engineering. Uh, she is also supporting the European Commission in the evaluation and coordination of uh, proposals uh, concerning the fields of uh, environment and energy. And she has also hosted multi uh, multiple workshops for teachers regarding the topic of, of climate change and sustainability. So uh, today, um, Anna will introduce us uh, to the European Climate Pact, an initiative of the European Commission that aims to uh, keep teachers uh, with uh, the necessary resources and tools to teach about climate change and engage uh, their students in climate action. Um, please uh, note that uh, Anna, with the support of her colleague Chiara, they have uh, prepared some sort of interactive activities that will take place uh, during this webinar. So we invite you to participate and uh, share your thoughts and uh, anything that will be asked during those uh, sort of and, and very interesting activities, I, I could say. Um, and of course, please stay until the very end of this webinar because we will serve with you uh, an evaluation form and also we will uh, um, tell you more about the upcoming events on uh, the European School Education uh, Platform. So, uh, with no further delays, uh, let's give the floor to Anna and explore this interesting and important topic uh, with her support. Anna, the floor is, the floor is yours. You can uh, take control of the presentation or share your screen. Uh, thank you very much, Marilena, and uh, good afternoon to everyone once again. And uh, thank you very much for also to the European Soul Education Platform for this opportunity to present today. Uh, so let me see if it works. I hope you can see my slides moving. Uh, if not, please let me know. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Marilena, just so you know, your camera is frozen to me, but I think the sound was working well. Uh, so also I ask uh, the colleagues, uh, Chiara, if uh, he, or uh, or other of the colleagues uh, in the support, if you see anything uh, not working from my side, please let me know. So once again, uh, a very warm welcome to all. It's really a pleasure to be uh, with you here today. Uh, so I'll begin with a brief introduction to the European Climate Pact. And then after that, uh, this session has three main components. I'll begin first by giving you an overview of the European Climate Pact tools uh, for leading group activities. And then I'll focus on taking individual action using the A-World mobile app. And then finally, uh, we'll explore how you can access additional resources through the European Climate Pact website, both to learn more and to teach uh, about climate change and climate action. And then at the end, of course, we'll have some time also to answer any questions that you may have for us. Uh, so uh, moving uh, to the next slide, uh, Maria Elena already mentioned that we have several uh, interactive activities for you today. Uh, we'll use two Padlet boards for that, as well as in the end, two Slido polls. We look forward to hearing your inputs. When the time comes, we'll explain exactly how to interact with this, with us using these different tools. Uh, but throughout the session, also feel free to use the chat, both to ask questions and to share ideas with us. We really look forward to hearing from you as well. So uh, to begin with the European Climate Pact, this is an initiative of the European Commission. It was launched under the framework of the European Green Deal. It has three main objectives. First, to help raise awareness of climate issues and of the EU policies and actions that are being put in place to address them. Uh, second, to encourage people to take climate action, both in their personal and professional capacities. Uh, and third, also to help connect citizens and organizations that are active in this space uh, to help them cooperate and to learn from each other. So these are the three main objectives of this initiative. And myself, I am supporting the European Climate Pact Secretariat. I apologize, there is a, a formatting issue. So in this slide, I wanted to ask you, so why, why, take, why take climate action? You are at this webinar, so I assume you are all very well aware of the climate change impacts. I won't dive into that. Um, this slide is just here to remind us that indeed, for us to, uh, to for the European Union to reach the, the goal of reaching climate neutrality by 2050, we all need to cooperate. We really need everyone to engage uh, across economic sectors, across professions, across geographies. So that's why we're talking here about uh, teaching, uh, teaching uh, about climate action and climate change. So let's tackle the climate crisis together. So first of all, why is citizen engagement so important and why is your engagement so important in this? Um, citizens and you yourselves in your community, uh, you have the capacity to inspire and to motivate the people around you uh, to adopt healthier and more sustainable practices and lifestyles. So this is a, a crucial uh, reason uh, to to want to have your your uh, your collaboration in this, to uh, your participation. But also, uh, we have each one of us. We have also the capacity to, to help empower people to influence public decision making. Uh, and to help advocate for more sustainable policies and in public investments. And of course, let's not forget also that it's important to take action to counteract misinformation and disinformation on the climate topics and other, other topics. Uh, but also here, uh, a, a common solution. It's important to share information from reliable sources. And these can be even good examples that you have from your own practice. Uh, and uh, the benefits that you've obtained 
by adopting climate-friendly uh, solutions, for example. Uh, so there are good reasons for sure to engage. And uh, let me, before going into the PAC tools, let me just briefly take this slide uh, to, to mention, to highlight the key role that education plays uh, to enable a sustainable future for us all. Of course, uh, the development of knowledge and skills uh, for uh, for the adoption of more sustainable lifestyles, but also uh, professions are are crucial, are are central, are a kickoff point. But let's not forget also the importance of building emotional and social connections, uh, and the key role that they, they play. Uh, in the development of values, attitudes, and behaviors uh, to support uh, a more sustainable future and a more sustainable development. So the point that I wanted to make here is that awareness and knowledge uh, skill is often not enough to lead to action. We need indeed a, a holistic approach. And uh, the approach is simple as, as simple as group activities can play an important role in this. So this is what we are going to start, let's say, the core of the presentation with. So how can you participate? How can you engage in the European Climate Pact? You can host a group activity for your school, uh, for your wider community, even if you want. And uh, to support you in this, the European Climate Pact uh, makes available four tools. We call them the Quick Start Tools for Citizen Engagement in Climate Action. These tools are just uh, guidance on four activities, four activities. And uh, the reason why this is uh, made available is, of course, to help inspire, to give ideas, but also to provide very practical guidance. Uh, so that, that anyone can host such group activities with minimum preparation. Uh, so that's the thinking behind these uh, tools that are made available. Uh, you can access them uh, by scanning this QR code, or uh, I would ask uh, my colleague Chiara to type in the direct link, which is also visible here uh, in the slide. Uh, we really encourage you to to explore them directly. But first, to give you a quick overview of what these tools are, what these activities are. So the Climate Walk is a guided tour uh, in your neighborhood or even within your school uh, to showcase sustainable practices and initiatives supporting the green transition and sustainable development. Uh, the photo story uh, tool uh, helps you to host a workshop where participants use photography uh, to reflect on climate issues and on possible solutions. And the output itself, the photo story that results from this group work, can be used to influence decision making. Uh, then the Peer Parliament tool uh, helps you to facilitate the discussion on how the transition to climate neutrality can work in our daily lives and what policies or measures should be put in place to encourage us going forward. And then finally, the local climate action group tool uh, can help you to bring together a group of committed people uh, for working together towards a, a goal, a common goal, which can be a project, uh, uh, an activity such as creating, for example, a school garden or a repair cafe. It's really up to the group to decide what the group wants to do together. So this is a quick overview. As mentioned, uh, you can access, and thank you, Chiara, for sharing already uh, the link uh, in, the, in the chat, uh, the link to the four quick start tools. Once uh, you are in this page, you can then easily access to each one of the tools, as you can see here. So if you go to the PACT website, imagine you don't have this link. It's very simple. If you do a search in Google, for example, you can access the European Climate Pact website. And then if you click on Get Involved uh, and then host a group activity, you will also find the tools. And I'll, I have another slide that shows you this more towards the end. Um, so now I would like to start uh, by telling you a little bit more about the Climate Walk. And thank you, Chiara. I see you've already shared the link in the chat as well. So. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview, but indeed, we really encourage you to explore, to visit the web page and to read more details and to see more. But so to host a, a, a climate walk, 
This activity can actually contribute to achieve several objectives, uh, namely to increase awareness, knowledge, empathy, and emotional response to local climate change impacts, but also to initiatives and opportunities for action. It can also help to build an understanding and support for climate policies and measures uh, that may be necessary. So um, this is a quick overview. If you go to the web uh, to the web uh, page, you will see that each one of the tools follows a similar structure. It begins with a brief overview and uh, information on the objectives, on the suggested number of participants, the suggested duration of the activity, and then it also has step by step guidance. Of course, what I'm showing you in the slides is condensed for the purpose of this uh, particular presentation. But you can find more information online. And uh, you can also, if you continue to scroll down in the tool web page, you'll also see a resources section. Uh, you will see examples of implementation and so on. So we hope that you will find them helpful. As mentioned, they, the information is very practice, very practice oriented. So looking at the climate walk, how to prepare, how to prepare, how to run a climate walk. Before the walk, we recommend you, of course, to identify and select an area with several points of interest and to define the tour itinerary uh, based on your group of participants, on the age of your students, on your particular subject, uh, on the mobility or auto autonomy that they have. So these different factors, of course, count in, and you as a teacher, I'm sure, are well familiar with all this. Before the walk, we also encourage you to register your activity with the European Climate Pact. And why not promote your activity in the school if the school has a newsletter or a, a board where you can add uh, activities such as this. Then during the walk, of course, we'll begin with a welcome and introduction. Uh, what is the purpose of the activity? And we recommend for you to use the stops of the walk to unfold the narrative. And the idea, we really encourage you to showcase positive examples, examples that are already put in place on the ground, doing change, uh, showing that it is possible to, to, change the, to change things. But also, of course, don't forget to highlight importance for more action to continue to raise uh, and to engage more people. And of course, thank participants and encourage them um, to, to also uh, take an active role. And after, after the walk, uh, we uh, encourage you also to share the results of your activity with the European Climate Pact. And we invite you to, to the extent possible, to stay in touch with the participants beyond the walk and see if additional measures have been taken uh, as a result of the, uh, the group activity that you've hosted. So this is a quick overview and let me now move to the next slide to give you an example of a climate walk that has been implemented in the city of Graz in Austria, where they visited a car sharing uh, point. They visit also an area where the soil is permeable and they talked about the water cycle and climate adaptation to refer the importance of permeable soil uh, to allow for water to infiltrate and to minimize the impact of flooding. Um, they've also visited a bakery and uh, a, um, a workshop uh, where upcycling of materials is done. So these are just to give you a few ideas. It's of course very important to make the walk as fun and as inclusive and as inclusive for all as possible. And uh, again, as mentioned, highlight the positives while emphasizing the need for more efforts. So now let's think about the school. Uh, and I know that some of you, depending on the age groups that you have and on the characteristics of your your students, um, you may not uh, you may be confined to keep most of the activities within the school at uh, the school walls. So why not host a climate walk? at the school. <laughs> and this is a bit the challenge that we have here. 
And uh, a few ideas why not visit uh, a classroom where measures have been implemented for energy efficiency or to reduce glare, uh, passive measures to reduce glare, so to minimize the need for using uh, the turn on the lights, uh, things like that. Why not visit the, the school garden or vegetable garden or the parking area for bicycles, things like that. A few, these are a few ideas, but actually what we want is to hear from you. And again, I apologize for the formatting issue with the slides. So we have a group activity that we would like to propose to you. Uh, and uh, what we propose is for us to plan a climate walk within, our, within your school, within our school. So the question is, what places will you visit? We ask you to indicate at least three places or to give likes to places that have been posted by other participants, at least three likes. So for this group activity, we are going to use a Padlet. You can use either this QR code uh, that is visible on the screen, or you can share the link that Marilena has just posted in the chat. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so before moving to the Padlet, let me just give you a quick uh, snapshot of how to participate. So once you are in the Padlet screen, uh, you can post uh, and to post just click the plus uh, button that exists on the bottom uh, right corner of your screen and we invite you to add three places that means three posts one po one place per post so um, I ask Marilena now to do what is necessary uh, to stop screening, uh, to stop sharing this uh, this presentation, so that we can see the Padlet, and uh, we invite you to to start uh, to start giving your inputs. Do I need to stop sharing? I apologize. Do I need to stop sharing before? No, no, I will do it no. right away. Okay, thank you very much. No worries. Excellent. So there's an ex example here just to help uh, inspire you. <laughs> and uh, if you have any trouble also accessing the Padlet, uh, please let us know. But uh, it should be ready for your entries, for your inputs. Uh, so you don't need to do any sign up or login, anything like that. Uh, so once you are in this web page, excellent. And I see that uh, there are already uh, some inputs uh, coming up. Uh, let me see. <laughs> uh -huh. And there are there are also some uh, some that have posted together the different ideas, and of course this is fine as well. This is, uh, and I apologize. You may be faster typing than I am <laughs> going through to approve the posts, uh, but I see I see that. Uh, uh, you have you are uh, all using the tool very well. Thank you very much for these uh, excellent ideas that are coming up. Uh, and I hope you are all being able to to see the the inputs from the colleagues. As mentioned, feel free to also give likes. To, to some of the, the visit uh, points, the visit stops that are being suggested. And there are really some very nice ideas. Um, and uh, uh, so as I'm, uh, as I'm going through, um, and there, these are really, really very, very nice ideas that are coming up. Um, and uh, they, they, I see a wide range of uh, suggestions from the school canteen to the trash bins um, to 
uh, bees, uh, beehives, um, so many, so many different ideas on collection. Talk, talk with the janitors, see how they are separating the, um, uh, how they are separating the, the, how they are processing the the waste that is being collected separately or not. So, um, a lot of good ideas. Visiting the healthcare facilities, even the school garden, creating an eco garden. Uh, talk about the school roof uh, and uh, having the electricity teacher talk about electricity production. So there are really a lot of uh, good ideas, and I apologize if I've missed um, uh, any of your suggestions already. I think this have uh, uh, been an excellent exercise already. Uh, and uh, feel free to continue to add these. Uh, I will not. Uh, uh, I suggest that in the interest of time, we move to the next uh, to the next activity. But the the um, Padlet will remain active until the end of the session. So feel free to continue to add and to see the other suggestions that the colleagues uh, are sharing here. So I would appreciate uh, Maria Elena if we could uh, return. Uh, and I apologize here for tampering with my microphone but uh, i would appreciate if we could return uh, to the presentation mode uh, to share the slides uh, and uh, but indeed uh, this is uh, this is really very good uh, it is great that uh, <laughs> that uh, there are so many suggestions so many ideas I, i'm continuing to approve uh, Posts as uh, as they are coming. Uh, oh, and I see that there are several uh, several suggestions regarding visiting the toilets as well. Not everybody closes the taps. I see here there are a few repeated entries, but it, this is fine. Of course, this is quite fun. So thank you all very much for participating and uh, don't hesitate to continue to add suggestions. It's really an opportunity also uh, to show what is being done, the positive actions that your school is already taking. Uh, so uh, feel free also to use the Padlet here to brag a little bit about the the activities that are being carried out in your in your school. Uh, can you so see, let me see. Uh, can you ah, I see the slide. I see. Thank Ooh. you very much. You can Marilena. great. I, I okay I have control again thank you very much sorry and thank you for that for refreshing my memory here I was uh, I was a bit distracted thank you very much so thank you all once again so moving now to the peer parliament tool uh, and this is a tool that uh, can help you to facilitate a discussion uh, on the transition to to climate neutrality and what uh, what needs to happen in terms of policies uh, what needs to be put on the ground to help us move, move forward. Uh, this activity can contribute to several objectives as before, including to raise awareness of opportunities for climate action in our daily lives, but also it can be a way to help uh, develop facilitation skills for discussions on climate policy and actions. And also it allows students and uh, groups to take part in a democratic exercise. So you see that this activity also can help us uh, meet several objectives, several very relevant objectives. Uh, so to begin, uh, let me tell you that we do have uh, uh, several documents available to support you in this. Uh, one is the facilitation guide where you have a detailed guidance on how to carry out a uh, such an activity. But also there are available learning materials. These are materials that have background information that can be very useful. Even if you're not planning on hosting a peer parliament, we really recommend for you to take a look. We have materials on three topics, uh, sustainable consumption, sustainable energy and sustainable mobility. And each one of these learning materials uh, they include two questions, two facilitation questions that uh, we suggest for the discussion. And uh, to answer each one of those questions, there are several options that are put to the consideration of the group. 
and let me advance to the next step because I'm already going to link as to how a peer parliament uh, works. And it basically has three main steps, which is the learning moment, the discussion moment, and the voting moment. We'll go into that. But first, how to prepare for a peer parliament? Again, in this slide, we see the before, the during, and after suggested actions. So before, as mentioned, we recommend downloading and reading the facilitation guide and learning materials. And of course, to choose the theme. Select a location, which can be the classroom, but uh, you can prefer a more informal setting like the cafeteria or the garden outside. So it's really up to you. Um, of course, invite the participants and don't forget to register the activity with the European Climate Pact. And then during the peer parliament, what is supposed to happen? Uh, we suggest the standard approach, the welcome and introduction with you giving uh, an overview of how participants can uh, can interact and what is your role or the role of the facilitator if you recruit other people to assist you in this. Um, begin by sharing the learning materials as well. And then for the moderation, we suggest these three step process. So in the first step, uh, learning, uh, the reading of the learning materials and the facilitation questions and options that are proposed for the debate. Then in the second moment, the discussion, where we really recommend that you give a chance for each of the participants to, to share their views. Um, so even very briefly, that's the idea that everyone everyone participates. And then in the third moment, uh, where each one of the group participants uh, provides an individual vote, and then it is the role of the facilitator to collect the rules, uh, sorry, to collect the votes and come to the aggregate, aggregated voting results. Uh, the next slide will, will tell you more about this. And then of course, thank everyone, and why not encourage them to also host their own peer parliament. Uh, then after the activity, uh, we invite you to share the group results with the European Climate Pact. And even again, we suggest uh, to the extent possible, why not to stay in touch with the participants to see if there were concrete um, activities that resulted from this. So this is also, of course, very, very interesting to assess the impacts. Um, so in this slide, uh, I would like to share a bit more about how to vote. The voting process is really entirely uh, at the, the criteria of the host. In this little table, the group's results on question one is just a sample. Uh, the, the facilitation guide includes ballots that the participants can use for voting. And this can, then of, can be done, of course, manually or digitally. So in this photo, you can see here an example where participants of a workshop used little stickers to provide uh, their vote uh, on the different options that were available in a poster. And this is a real peer parliament that was hosted in Italy not long ago. Um, but so this can also be done using, uh, for example, a spreadsheet or even a shared spreadsheet where different participants uh, can uh, can join online and give their inputs. For example, one column uh, for the vote of each of the of your students. This could be arranged. So the idea is then at the end uh, you sum up. The, the points for each one of the options here, they are numbered. They are uh, identified as A, B, C, D, E. Uh, these could be the different options that are considered for the voting. And you would sum up the points for each one uh, of the options considered. And th then the option that gets more points ranks first, ranks as preferred option. And the one that received less points uh, is the least preferred, so ranks last. So uh, another option uh, is uh, a, an online platform, uh, the Slido. Uh, we'll actually also use it uh, at the end of this webinar for two polls, but Slido can also be used uh, for ranking polls. They have different formats. And here in the slide, you can see an example of uh, such a ranking poll, which we, we used very recently as well. So the participants can order uh, the 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 their their um, 
can order the solutions uh, by their order of preference. So there are indeed different uh, possibilities and here slide the uh, results already processed, the platform processes them, uh, but it, this is not necessary. You can also use different ways like the, the manual paper-based uh, approach, but also, for example, using a Google Sheet uh, where the participants can insert the points and you can even have the formula so that uh, the result is calculated automatically. So this, there are different approaches that you can take. I would uh, again like to propose a group activity for you. But first, uh, I would like to highlight one point, which is that the peer parliament's theme and the facilitation questions and even the different options, the voting options, can be adjusted to suit your teaching needs. The materials that are available now, uh, I, I would say that they are quite advanced. I would uh, recommend uh, using them, depending on the maturity of your students, uh, from 14 or 16 uh, years old uh, upwards. Uh, so, uh, but uh, the framework itself, as mentioned, can be adjusted. So let's try doing that exercise. So let's prepare a peer parliament for our school by answering the following questions. And here I'm using the same topics that are available in the learning materials, uh, currently available, sorry, uh, the topics that are in the currently available learning materials. So, for example, tackling the topic of energy. What measures would encourage us to save energy in our school? Tackling mobility, what measures would encourage us to walk or cycle to school? This could be one possible facilitation question, and I'm sure that you could think of other questions that would be relevant for your particular group or for your particular school uh, or your subject. Uh, on consumption, how can we eat more sustainably and waste less food in our school? So once again, um, we have a Padlet, a Padlet board prepared for our group activity. And uh, we invite you to either scan the QR code or follow the link uh, that Maria Elena has already shared in the chat. Thank you for this. Uh, here, uh, once again, Maria Elena, feel free to stop sharing and move to the, to the Padlet board. So under each one of the questions, each one of these three questions, uh, there is a plus sign. In this case, the way to participate is to just click that sign and to uh, fill in your entry. Of course, don't forget to hit send or submit to make sure that uh, that we can see uh, your, uh, your inputs. Uh, if you have any question, of course, also feel free to raise it in, uh, in the... Um, uh in the chat and i see that are already um some uh, inputs that are coming up thank you very much uh and here in the measures that can be uh proposed can be considered consider measures that go beyond our individual choice our individual scope of action you can consider for example measures that can be taken by the school administration or by the municipality, or even the national government, or why not the European Union. So feel free to consider measures at these different levels, depending, of course, also what is relevant, considering your the age of your students and your topics and so on, of course. Uh, once again, uh, a lot of inputs are coming up. Thank you very much. And feel free, the invitation that we do to you is to give at least one entry per question or to give uh, or and to give likes to uh, other inputs, of course. Uh, thank you very much. I see you are much faster at typing than I am going through them. <laughs> very good. <laughs> oh, this is, these are excellent ideas, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you very much. 
thank you for participating. I see that the, the several uh, several suggestions continue to 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 come up. Uh, and I see some uh, also that uh, uh, that uh, I recognize uh, from other occasions, like the Paddy Bus. I, I have to admit uh, that is one of the activities that I'm very fond of, uh, where the parents take turns in collecting uh, small groups of children and bring them to school. So the parents help each other, taking turns on this role uh, and uh, of course it's an excellent opportunity for the kids to interact with each other uh, and to build those connections as well so wonderful suggestions here of course um, um at different levels the turn off uh, the lights uh, uh, no to the the installing renewable energy uh, on the school roof or other uh, so a lot of, of course, a lot of uh, very important, uh, uh, some easier, some uh, require more effort to put in place, uh, but uh, a lot of good ideas, including to monitoring uh, the consumption, of course, of energy. Um, <laughs> exactly. And uh, uh, this is very nice because I see uh, your suggestions, your concrete from your from your concrete spaces, locations like the uh, putting solar panels on the bike shed roofs, things like that. So thank you all very much. Uh, in the interest of time, again, I'm going to ask uh, Maria Elena to go back to the presentation. Uh, but uh, again, this uh, padlet remains open. Feel free to continue to add suggestions throughout uh, until the end of the session. Thank you all very much. Uh, for your participation uh, this uh, this is all uh, very much appreciated and uh, great ideas here including on creating a, a competition on uh, uh, getting uh, food from the vegetable garden in the school etc a lot of uh, i'm sorry you are faster typing than i am uh, um, than i am uh, uh, approving all this thank you very much Thank you all Anna, very much. Sorry, Anna, the presentation is uploaded. You can uh, take control. I take control. Thank you very much, Marilena, for the report. No worries, no worries. <laughs> and we still have uh, 15 minutes to the end. Okay? Oh, I need to move faster. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. No worries. So very quickly to tell you about the photo story. The photo story is also a very interesting workshop uh, where Participants are invited to take pictures about issues, but also about possible solutions to climate issues. So it's not uh, it's to stimulate that search for um, for solutions and not just to take a passive role on identifying uh, issues. So this activity can help achieve several objectives like increasing awareness, knowledge, empathy and emotional responses to local climate change impacts and also to the local initiatives and solutions and opportunities. It can also be used to encourage constructive journalism and civic participation, which of course are very important components of democracy. So a photo story. I'm going to move to the next slide just to give you a more concrete idea of what is intended and then I'll go back. Each participant is asked to take three pictures, one of a negative situation to be improved, uh, another of a proactive measure that can be put in place to address that negative situation, and the third, a positive a picture of the positive resulting situation after the intervention, after that positive proactive intervention. So this is the idea uh, and each image should be given a caption and the caption and the image should together provide, uh, convey a coherent uh, message, a coherent meaning. And this should be consistent with the chosen topic the topic that you choose. So how to organize a photo story before choose the topic. And here we give you a few ideas like, for example, nature based solution for climate adaptation or sustainable mobility or zero waste or climate anxiety. There's a different, a wide range of topics that can be explored, but we recommend that you select a topic on which you feel comfortable, where you have expertise or 
to invite someone that can help you uh, address a specific topic. It can be a colleague or even someone from your community that may be an expert on, on the topic you want to address. We recommend that you select an area with several points of interest on that topic and, of course, register your activity, promote your activity. Uh, during the, se the, the workshop itself, there are several segments or sessions that should be considered. We recommend an introductory talk, a brief talk of 15 to 30 minutes to explain what's going to be done, what's going to happen, and then the photography session. And here we indicate uh, two hours approximately, but this really depends on the scope of your activity. And if you only have 45 minutes or one hour and a half, that is plenty. If, for example, if you are only focusing on the school, on a school building, on the school garden, something like that. So you, these are just indications that you can adjust as convenient. The third segment is then when the group reconvenes for the selection of the pictures, for the discussion, and basically for the storytelling component. And here, a very important resource that is available to you is a template that you can use, that the group can use to put the photo story together, to put the, the different images together and to create the storytelling component. So again, uh, after the, the activity itself, we recommend that you share the photo story, uh, not just with the European Climate Pact with us. Depending on the scope, on the focus of the photo story, it may be interesting to share it with additional uh, stakeholders, with policy makers, with decision makers. So, for example, if your photo story focuses on something that falls under the uh, jurisdiction of the school administration. Why not share it with the school administration? Or if it falls under the jurisdiction of the municipality, why not share it with the municipality? So these are some of the ideas. And in the end, why not encourage the participants to also host, um, sorry, to also develop their own photo stories, even if without a workshop. Uh, the photo story itself that results from the group work can be promoted in, in different ways, for example, through an exhibition or as an ebook. These are just some ideas. The final tool I would like to tell you about um, is the Local Climate Action Group. And this is also very interesting. Um, it can help to meet objectives such as mobilizing people and resources to implement a project or activity which is relevant to your school. Uh, it can help build the sense of community and team building uh, with concrete impacts that the participants can see. And it can help improve the facilitation and project management skills of the participants. So this is also a very interesting activity. Uh, before the activity itself, we recommend for you to identify an initial group of people that can be the core, let's say, to help you take forward uh, this, uh, this activity. Uh, talk with them. Uh, invite them to a meeting plan together. During the activity, we recommend, but of course, this is, uh, this depends on the age and the autonomy that your students have. Uh, but uh, the more activities you do together, the more you build their capacity to take on more responsibilities. So maybe start with something simple, uh, a simple activity, and then building on that, expand and grow further. The idea is that in the end, the group decides what they want to do, what they want to achieve, and how each member contributes. Uh, they define the actions that are needed, the resources. Uh, they define the, the timeline, the responsibilities. They uh, commit to it. And then, of course, the group should meet to take collective action, but also for some troubleshooting if needed. In the end, don't forget to celebrate and to disseminate the group's achievement. And of course, we look forward to hearing from your activities, the results of your activities. A few ideas of possible school climate action groups, a climate movie club or a school gardening group, uh, a climate reporters group. If you have more ideas or uh, suggestions, please feel free to type them in the chat. In the interest of time, we don't have a Padlet on this one. 
But I wanted to highlight that, again, you are very much encouraged to participate uh, and to share the results of your group activities with the European Climate Pact. This is really an invitation uh, that the Climate Pact does to all individuals and organizations in the EU that are interested in this. Um, and uh, it, it's very simple. You can... Um, uh, I'll show you in the next slide how to get them. There's just here this reminder that you can engage your students, but also fellow teachers, uh, the school staff and administration, parents, even the wider community with other stakeholders. So uh, it's an opportunity to bring them on board uh, and to give them visibility through this uh, European level uh, movement that is ongoing. Um, how to find the, the web page uh, with all the relevant links? Go to our website and here's the URL, but you can find it in Google easily. And uh, ah, thank you very much, Maria Elena, for sharing the direct link there in the chat. You can click on Get Involved and click on Host a Group Activity. So what happens with the results? The European Climate Pact Secretariat and I'm part uh, of the staff that supports the Secretariat. We process the inputs that we receive and we share them with the European Commission, particularly with the uh, DG Klima, the Directorate General for Climate Action. And through the European Climate Pact, there are different meetings and events which are being held from a local and national to European level. Uh, and there are, of course, different opportunities there to showcase the results. The tools. Uh, have been launched, the PACT tools have been launched on the 31st of January this year. And in these four months that have uh, elapsed, over 1,500 people have already participated in these group activities and they've shared the results with us, including uh, activities uh, from schools. And we really look forward to hearing from you as well. And we hope that you find this information useful. So how to share the results with the European Climate Pact. Uh, the links are available in the web page, the host group activity web page, as, as well as in each of the tools that I mentioned. So if you scroll to the resources section, you'll find the relevant links there. You don't need to search for them further. Um, this is voluntary, of course, all of this is voluntary, but we also encourage you to upload up to three pictures of your activity. And uh, uh, again, this is voluntary, but uh, of course the European Union and the European Commission is committed to the protection of the citizens' data and privacy. And so if the, the faces, if people are recognizable, uh, we invite you also to uh, ask them to uh, sign an image use consent form, the students or the, their legal guardians, of course, the, the parents, depending on the age. Uh, so um, the 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 signed consent forms can be uh, saved into one file, and they can also be uh, uploaded via the the results form. Uh, a few tips to get good pictures: good lighting is the key to avoid dark shadows, and also. Uh, try to capture the people's interaction and smiling faces from these occasions. These are also very important elements for communication. These were the PACT tools uh, for hosting, for leading group activities. I also wanted to mention another tool, uh, another resource, I should say, the A World mobile app, uh, which was developed and is being used uh, under the United Nations Act Now campaign uh, on sustainable development. And this app uh, can be used to measure the carbon footprint and to track the impact of certain measures in it. So you can use it to take individual action, but you can also use it with your students so that uh, they learn about the carbon footprint and what they can do um, to reduce that that footprint. So to download it, to install it in your mobile, uh, you can scan the QR code or you can visit our web page. Again, thank you very much, Marilena, for sharing the link to the Take Individual Action web page. And there you'll learn more about this uh, this app. To conclude, uh, the, web, the European Climate Pact website does have more resources available for you, uh, both to teach and to learn more about climate action. Uh, so 
this web page, this slide shows you this. Um, if you go to Get Inspired, you will get access to a database of resources, and we recommend that you do two searches as an educator or as a young person so that you find different resources. First step, identify yourself. In this case, the example educator, then close the menu and then click search and you'll get a wealth of resources. Here's an example of a resource that is available online. It's a publication called Nudge for Climate uh, and it, um, it gives the valuable tips uh, valuable guidance on how to influence people's behavior, in this case, in this particular scale uh, case at school, uh, towards more sustainable choices without eliminating choices. So it's an interesting, uh, it's been a very interesting reading and it's just an example of the resources that are available uh, to you. Uh, with this, this concludes the contents that I had to share with you. I'm going to ask uh, Chiara, our, thank you very much, Chiara. I already see, uh, excellent, the first poll. So the question that we pose to you is this. Do you intend to use one of the European Climate Pact tools or resources with your students? If yes, which one? And we ask you to uh, to. Uh, indicate here. I apologize because I should have added uh, one extra option, uh, which would be uh, other other resource. But feel free to also type it in the chat. Uh, Kiara, I'm able to see the slide, but I'm actually ah yes. Now I see that people are beginning to to participate. At least one part, two, three. Okay, I see that people are now. Uh, participating, please don't uh, forget to click the submit uh, on the on the pop up window that comes up, so that we we indeed receive your vote. So thank you very much for this feedback. This is very helpful for us to know what you find most uh, useful or not uh, from this this uh, suite. Uh, this uh, this palette, if you will, of options that you we have available at this time, and I see that uh, there are two very popular apps uh, options here: the climate walk and the photo story. I see that they are interchanging. Of course, we are very glad to see this. Thank you very much. Um, I see some people are still voting, and uh, I see that actually only a very few. Uh, a few, very few of the participants, about uh, uh, not yet one third of the participants have voted so far. So let's uh, just wait for a few moments. But I see that there is a, <laughs> there is a, a substantial preference here for the climate walk and photo story. But glad to see also that the peer parliament is considered, the A World App, the Climate Action Group. Uh, thank you all very much uh, for your feedback here. We are close to one third of the participants giving the feedback. Thank you very much. Chiara, in the interest of time, I ask you to please move to the next um, um, next poll. Although keeping them open for now, I think if that's possible, I don't know if it's not, it's fine. Let's just advance to the next poll. So the the uh, if it, if not if not possible, if you are not planning on using one of the tools or resources uh, that have been presented, uh, we would like to know why. <laughs> and uh, of course, feel free also to chat to type in the chat. Um, because, of course, these are, again, very important uh, pointers for us to know what is relevant for you. How can we adjust the support that we provide uh, so that uh, we can better engage uh, teachers, schools, educators, uh, other school staff, of course, and the community? Because, of course, the schools really play uh, a key role in mobilizing the community. Uh, not just the students and uh, and uh, and parents, but even beyond. So thank you very much. I see that uh, uh, we've had uh, already a few votes. Um, 
Chiara, is it possible to leave the, the poll open to still give participants time, but uh, to bring up the last slide? Uh, thank you very much. So this is basically to share with you the, the email address. If you have questions or further ideas that you want to explore with us, please feel free to connect. Uh, and again, here's also uh, the link to uh, the quick start uh, menus. Uh, tools uh, with the QR that will take you there directly. So thank you very much and uh, apologies for exceeding the time. Uh, it was really a pleasure. Thank you uh, for sharing, also for participating in the interactive activities. Uh, we, we, we really hope that uh, you found uh, some use in this, uh, that you found it helpful and we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, in the European Climate Pact, uh, hearing from you from your host activities with your school and your students. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, Maria Elena, I hand back to you. I don't know if you would like to uh, to make uh, any closing remarks. Thank you very much, Anna. Yes, indeed, uh, we would like to make uh, some closing remarks here. You didn't exceed your time since uh, we started a few minutes uh, later. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your understanding and for your participation. Unfortunately, I don't have access to my camera, so um, you can't see me, but uh, hopefully you can see my uh, presentation. Uh, so here yes. are some upcoming learning events on the European School Education Platform. Uh, we have an upcoming webinar uh, regarding uh, the um, well-being of teachers. Uh, it's uh, an one hour and 30 minutes webinar. So hopefully uh, you will get uh, a lot of information because you uh, participants will be presented a toolkit regarding the well-being uh, of uh, teachers and some uh, good practices. And of course, uh, we have our online course series that uh, will be ongoing until December. Uh, we really hope uh, that you enjoyed this webinar. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. Thank you for your participation. Uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Chiara. And uh, thank you, Alessia, my colleague Alessia here for uh, supporting me. Uh, no, once again, no certificates are issued for this webinar, but uh, within two, three days, you will be able to find the recording of the webinar and the um, uh, presentation. Everything will be shared with you. All the links will remain in the chat of the webinar if you want to find them. And uh, we hope to see you soon in the future. Anna, once again, thank you very much. Have a nice uh, evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Marilena and Alessia. Thank you all very much. Have a good afternoon, everyone. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.